hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Into the Pit. I have here AP and Zuzu. And they are best described as what? Cryptid uh, explorers? Uh, I mean, Investigators? I think, yeah, we're, we would be all-encompassing uh, cryptid and paranormal. But lately it's been a lot of, uh, been a lot more cryptid really. You know, I've noticed something that it's the talk of Bigfoot and, and cryptids like that are, are being talked about a lot more. Um, I don't know if you have Amazon Prime or not, but I see they've got a new show on there. Um, I Do you know who uh, Todd Neese is? Uh, yeah, I've heard the name. Okay, yeah. he, he runs a, a, it's like a big get together and uh, I believe it's up in Oregon. Mm-hmm. And uh, the uh, the interaction with everybody in that community just seems like it's it's getting more and more and more. Um, of course, you know that we have the uh, UFO disclosure coming out June first. So when are we going to get the cryptid disclosure? Mm. Uh, I mean. I have my own theories. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen for a long time, uh, simply because uh, once, uh, say, they're like, okay, yeah, Bigfoot is a thing, mm -hmm. uh, immediately uh, they classify it as an endangered species. Uh, it, would, the, it would affect the, the lumber company. It would affect new residential uh, locations just uh, parks and recreation, uh, national parks. Uh, I mean, we're talking like million, billions, trillions of dollars lost because, you know, they, they have this endangered species living around us. Yeah. Well, but you know, like you get a lot of talk from people who say there's no way this could be real. And why haven't you found concrete evidence yet? you know, bones, that kind of thing. Now I have heard otherwise from uh, a few people in the field. Uh, do you believe that that evidence is really there? Uh, for personal experience? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, they're there, they're out there and they're actually, they're a lot closer than everyone realizes. Mm -hmm. They're just, they're just extremely good at camouflage. And uh, I mean, they're masters of, of the woods. It, it's, yeah, they're like you know, literally the 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 world's uh, best hide and seek champions. You know, oh, no, that's right. Well, I've heard this theory that a lot of the hairs on Bigfoot would be uh, translucent, almost like a mirror, though, and so they're able to blend in a lot, but almost like a chameleon. Uh, I, I mean, it's there's there's a lot of theories as far as uh, how they blend in. Um, I, I mean, it's like you, have you ever seen a sniper in a uh, ghillie suit? No, you haven't because they're just that good. I mean, these things are so, I mean, I've seen pictures like recently of these things just sitting between trees. And honestly, if you just, just a quick glance, mm -hmm. you wouldn't even notice they were there, but someone just happened to snap a photo and they zoomed in. It's not like pareidolia where you might see some eyeballs, like there's no leaves or anything in the area. Right. All you see is two, uh, a split trunk of a tree. And in between it is this giant humanish, uh, gorilla-ish face. Uh, and then you notice the rest of the limbs just sticking out. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty mind blowing. Yeah, but I mean, Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Uh, I think I was just going to go on a random, uh, random tirade, but, uh, I mean, talking about these things being there is mm -hmm. like one thing, but when you're actually, when you know for sure mm -hmm. that this flesh and blood, uh, monstrous creatures in front of you it like totally just warps your entire perception of of what you know and what you think you know um 
Uh, so one of our last excursions out into uh, an area south of us. It, I mean, it, it's a it's a trail. It's a used trail. Mm. Um, it has it's got these signs on it. Uh, anyway, it, it tells you about kind of like the wildlife and what what vegetation is in the area. So we walk up, and this is what we we find this. It's is that is that a uh, vertebrae? I you know what it, it's possible uh, the way it's shaped. You know, I didn't even think about it before, but it could be. But uh, not really sure what creature is from or why it was just sitting on the sign randomly. My father is a physician, and said looking at it, it looks like part of a leg bone. A leg bone. <clears throat> yeah, I mean it, it's split. It's split in half, and it's old. It's, I mean it, it's. Uh, it's almost fossilized that it's so old, but it was just extremely, uh, it's, it was a random find. So are you going to get that tested or have you already had it tested? You know, no. Um, and here's why, uh, there's a lot of people have, have had a uh, pretty solid evidence, uh, blood samples, uh, hair, sample. hair samples, saliva, uh, other other uh, body parts, random, like bones and stuff. Mm -hmm. They send them off to be tested, and it just comes back as uh, partially human and partially unknown. <clears throat> or they'll say that it's human, and, um, and then that's that. Or they'll say that you're going to need a lot more money uh, <laughs> yeah. to get this tested even more. Uh, I mean, like 30 plus thousand. Good uh, night. Yeah. And uh, I don't know about you, but I don't have that kind of money. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. I will one day. <laughs> yeah. Just not yet. Yeah. Well, you think if they said it was human, that they'd have some kind of uh, a murder investigation or. Yeah. Uh, at, well, and that's a, that's the weird thing. It, it's uh, a lot of this, these, these tests from what I hear, like they are coming back. Uh, as human, um, but I think uh, a lot of it is is how this stuff is handled as well. Um, there's really no, I mean, you you don't have any control. Um, I mean, you're just picking it up, putting it in a bag. Uh, that bag could have you know your your DNA all over it. Uh, you know, it's just. I think like in the field, a lot of, a lot of the researchers don't think about stuff like that. Um, and honestly, like I, before we even, this whole Bigfoot thing is, is really, it, it's kind of new. Um, like a lot of my experience uh, and knowledge uh, was always in paranormal. And that's, that was what I was, I focused on for many, many years. Uh, and then I had a, I had an experience with what I thought was a demon. Uh, and then the most recent experience uh, made me rethink everything. And uh, I put a lot of the pieces together that, from that night, from like 2010, I think. 2010 or 20, I can't remember. It was a while ago. Um, but just all the, all the pieces really point to to a sasquatch you know or a bigfoot or whatever you want to call it um and then uh, digging a little bit deeper uh about that same year mm -hmm. uh there was actually a sighting where there shouldn't have been a sighting uh i mean like within large city limits let's say no uh, kidding yeah, dude, it, it was, when I read it, I was like, that's insane. There's no way. It was, uh, it, it was the guy and his wife uh, and their child were actually on a, on a, a paved uh, trail in, in, the, in the city. And uh, they saw this thing on a, on a pipeline cut. And uh, he saw it, the guy saw it first, according to the report, he saw it first, and then he didn't. He wasn't sure what he saw. And then 
he went to uh to get his wife's attention she looked and it had it had moved slightly but it was just kind of like standing there swaying and like they so many reports of the, these things like swaying like just weird it's weird behavior it's almost it reminds me of like a, a praying mantis how like you know oh, like yeah. they they mimic you know leaves in the wind you mm-hmm. know i'm thinking i'm wondering if that's if they do that uh for the same reason uh, some kind of i guess extra help in stealth yeah that's that's crazy well and that was recent uh that was like 2010 2010 oh. between 2010 and 2012 okay yeah, the one with a couple that was recent. Okay, because uh, I'm just wondering, with the you know the pandemic and everything, and everybody locked down, they've noticed animals that normally wouldn't come into the city are starting to come out more. So I wonder if that has a factor. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Look, I'm going to tell you, um, there is probably thousands and thousands of undocumented. Uh, uh, experiences with these creatures um two three nights ago as a matter of fact um there was a a road that was being cut into cut through the forest by where we live mm-hmm. and uh uh there someone had heard a uh, a loud scream like a just a crazy banshee type type scream and then a, a rapid succession of gunfire. Um, and this was near uh, one of the camping spots. And I, I think there was two gentlemen and they were in their truck and they were kind of like sc- scouting because hunting season's not too far away. Right. So I think, uh, you know, these two gentlemen that were, they were uh, placing feeders and stuff like that. But <clears throat> anyway, apparently something had a uh, tap on their window, on their, on their truck window. No way. And, uh, yeah, when they had turned to see what it was, all they saw was, was the stomach, like midsection. Mm-hmm. Um, so this thing was, I mean, what top of the truck is about six feet. Yeah. Pretty so close. They're looking through, a, they're looking through a, tr- a pickup window and that's all they see is, is you know, the abdomen. That's nuts. Yeah. So, they freaked out this thing uh moved back towards the wood line and then that's when it screamed at them um and then they that's when they started they started shooting uh and when somebody asked uh what were you shooting at uh, we were just shooting in the area of uh where we saw it i'm like man you guys that's uh that's a little dangerous yeah no kidding <laughs> Especially like nowadays, because that whole area is just starting to, starting to boom with, with the, uh, you know, residential neighborhoods. Right, right. <clears throat> but yeah, it's uh, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of sightings like that. Uh, I mean, there's like howls, you know, like not coyote. These aren't coyotes. They're they're ape like. They're ape like howls. Uh, like almost uh, howler monkeys, uh, grunts, growls. I mean, all sorts of stuff. Like there, there's whistles. Whistles. Oh my God! Yeah. I think that one thing that really shocked me when we had gone out to do some paranormal investigating, and I was reviewing the footage, had my eyes closed, listening. Sounds that I was not aware of, or maybe just paying attention to at the time. I would heard it in the audio whistles heard the knocking it was just surprising how often they are next to you and you're just not even aware i think overall we live in a time where people are for the most part oblivious to anything but their phone that true you know, Very screen true. time so <laughs> most people aren't paying attention to their surroundings i mean the first excursion that we went on i immediately was aware of walking and the leaves that was dry this heavy footfall it was it's just shocking that even so close in city limits and one of them was right by a very busy road there's still activity i you know i've had several people on here 
that uh, you know in the field and everybody seems to have their own theories you know their their thoughts of what exactly sasquatch is you know where it actually came from i've heard everything under the sun what what is y'all's take on it mine personally <laughs> we, we have some agreement and some disagreement but i really think that it's kind of like the there's multiple links between man and ape right and humans homo sapien kind of won that battle because of our aggressiveness etc but i know that there was interbreeding between man and neanderthal and i i think it's a link between us and ape that has just been able to survive by hiding and what about you ap oh my turn uh Your turn <laughs> Man, I don't even know if I want to say uh, it's a wacky theory. No, it's not so far out. Hey, it's pretty wacky. It's pretty I've, wacky. I've heard some crazy stuff, so I don't think you could shock me. <laughs> so, man, I almost don't want to, to. It's almost an intrusive thought sometimes. It's like, uh, hey, man, this is what they are. You know, like, that's dumb. Uh, and I bounce between, like, theories, you know, a lot of times, but... Uh, I mean, these things have been around a long, 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 long time, man. Probably the same, the same time uh, as as we maybe longer as as humans maybe longer. I don't know. Uh, I wasn't there. Uh, sometimes I think it's it's an alien, like an alien human hybrid. <laughs> I've I've heard that from other uh, people. So well, it, like uh, I w I'm a big fan. Uh, I mean, I take into consideration Zachariah Sitchin's books, uh, and like, uh, I mean, because I mean, a lot of it just—it sounds silly. It sounds uh, just fantastical. But I mean, you start if you start looking into uh, some of the the sites that they're talking about, and, and uh, a lot of the just the weird anomalies, like it, it kind of almost makes sense, you know. So. Um, I'm thinking maybe they're maybe it's like an alien hybrid. Uh, I think that some humans are alien hybrids. Um, uh, that's I think that's probably why you know some humans are like Rh positive, you know, and some aren't uh, because the, the Rh positives are, are the ones that are not the alien hybrids. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we were basically uh, a a test. We were we were uh, we were a science experiment basically for slave labor. So sometimes I think that, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'm like, man, that's that's way out there. It's kind of weird. But then again, like uh, I know for a fact that Bigfoot exists. So, you know, it's, but before when I I I knew, I thought I knew that Bigfoot exists. I mean, as a kid growing up, I was like fascinated with, with ghosts and vampires and you know, monsters and, and Bigfoot, and I was like, I was sure that Bigfoot was a thing; it was real. And you know, next thing you know, like, yeah, for sure it is. <clears throat> and then it just it stops you in your tracks, and you're just uh, like her. She's just she's just hardcore, man. Like nothing nothing really phases her. Like <clears throat> my first altercation, I was like. You can hear my pulse through the camera, man. No way. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll send you some of the video. Like, you can hear my pulse legit through the camera. You can hear it going, woo, 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 woo. It's like very faint, but you can hear it. And like, I'm shaking so bad mm -hmm. that it's like the whole camera's rattling. And I'm like doing my best to, to try and get these things on video. But uh, I mean, we had a, I had infrared. Uh, with the uh, infrared camera with an uh, IR uh, IR flashlight. Mm -hmm. uh, batteries died on that. Uh, I couldn't find the other battery that ended up missing. <clears throat> so I pulled out the full spectrum that ended up uh, being a little bit better quality. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was using an IR flashlight. But, uh, man, it's like these things knew uh, exactly where to be, to be just out of the light. It, it was, it was 
pretty frustrating because I mean, got, I mean, it got to a point where like, yeah, I was terrified. I'm not gonna lie. I was terrified. I was like, it, at first I, I, I was like, no, we need to go. Let's go. When they, they started, I was like, no, they started throwing <laughs> rocks. Um, uh, uh, they, one of them, like you heard splashing. And at first I thought, well, I'm pretty sure one of them jumped in the, cause we were at a Creek and I think we walked up on their hunting ground really is they were feeding, um, either feeding or mating. All I know is the second we stepped out of the car, the vocalizations were yeah. just booming. Yeah. It was oh, yelling. It was exhilarating. Yeah. Uh, it was yelling some growling, a lot of growling, uh, grunting, mooing. Yeah. Mooing. You heard that right. Mooing. Yeah. It was, yeah. Mooing. It was like uh, trying to mimic the cow. Yeah, it it, didn't sound it, right. It was a poor attempt. It was like a, <laughs> a very, very large, angry cow, and like <laughs> like me trying to sing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the nearest uh, the nearest farm was uh, a mile. Um, but like these cows were right next to us. You know, they were just right across the creek from us. Um, I, it was just insane. As soon as we got out of the car, it was, insane. It was just nothing but insanity. Okay, you got me really wanting to go out with y'all. Oh, so yes. I'm going to have to make a trip down there so we can, <laughs> can go. You Seriously. know what? We can go to your neck of the woods because there's quite a few locations uh, around, you, around you guys that uh, there's been several sightings. Man, any, anytime... All you need is is, is covering, mm -hmm. water, and food source. That's it. You'll tip. You'll probably find them. Yeah. I might might have to take you up on it. Have you come up here and stay, and we'll go out and and see if we can find something. Yeah. Well, I mean, we you can come down here and like there's spots we know like for fact that uh that they're there. Man. Uh, well, yeah, you know. Go ahead. Oh, you was gonna say that you know that that theory that you were talking about the alien hybrid i've noticed and it's been brought up before that a lot of times when you have a bigfoot sighting you also have a ufo sighting in the same area um i have heard that before uh i've never actually experienced that um i've seen what i thought was a ufo maybe one time in my life and that was like a long time ago mm -hmm. um but, uh, like, they're not, I mean, these, they're, blood, they're flesh and blood creatures. Like, I'm not a wacko, you know. I know that a lot of people think that they're, they're mystical beings and they're, they're, interplan they're uh, interdimensional. I don't believe that. Um, I believe that they do have certain abilities that, uh, that make them uh, apex predators, uh, that make them top of the food chain. Mm -hmm. um, they have... I do believe that they have enhanced abilities that normal uh, predators have, uh, like I, infrasound for one. I know, I know they have infrasound because I felt it, um, and it's it's like a it's in your guts type of thing, you know. Uh, it's a irrational fear when you really shouldn't be scared, um, you know. It, it's it's like a, all your senses kick into overdrive and like you know something's wrong. But, I mean, it's a nice, pretty, sunny day, and all of a sudden, you're just terrified for no reason. Like, why? You know? I'm the opposite. I become, like, in France. Oh, no. And then she's, like, trying to braid their hair and stuff. I'm, <laughs> I have to, like, keep a harness on her, man, just to... What are those leashes for yeah, kids? Yeah, I got to you know? keep, like, you know, I got to have, like, I need eyes in the back of my head. So I'm like, all right, where's she at? I'm, you know, I'm that way when it comes to ghost hunting. And somebody says, oh, there's something in that attic, and... You know, most everybody's like, oh, I ain't going up there. I'm like, put me up there and shut the door. I'll sit and I'll yeah. sit there for two or three hours. And yeah, up. ghosts like. A, That's like, what you came for. You get that. Right. You get that like uh, that that intense feeling like whenever it feels like something passes through you, you know, like ghosts I can deal with all day long. Um, uh, Sasquatch, I, Bigfoot I can deal with, but on my terms, you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, not. Uh, <laughs> Not in a dark, dark woods scene, you know, like where there's like several of them just 
circling you, you know, like you hear them on your left, you hear them on your right. You I agree they're you. dangerous, but at the same time, I think they read your energy. Yeah, I, I, I do believe that. And I mean, the situation that we were in with, with the aggressive encounter, um, it, the, the company we were with, I don't think their intentions were, uh, uh, 100% pure, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that's, they were probably feeding off of that. Like the last encounter that I had, mm -hmm. she actually went out of town. Um, and I went with, uh, uh, with a friend of mine that's like, that, that runs with, the, with our group. Right. Um, and it was, as soon as I pulled up, um, I hear walking, you know, I get out of the car and I'm like, just kind of surveying the area. Um, and I hear, I hear walking in the woods just directly behind me. Um, so <laughs> I haven't sent you the recording, but I, I made a recording. I'm like, Hey, look, this is, uh, a, a AP. Uh, I'm at this location. Uh, if you find this phone, uh, send it to this person. Uh, and then I started talking to her. I was like, hey, anything happens. Uh, Tell my children I love them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then I text her. I'm like, hey, because it, it was like a, I didn't feel there was no fear. Like I wasn't terrified. I didn't feel like I shouldn't be there. It was a, I knew I was, I knew I was being watched. I felt like, you know, you have that. You always know when you're being watched, man. Right. Uh, but in those scenarios, like it's it's just intensified. You know, no, you're being watched. You know. Uh, so I sent her a text. Uh, I said, "Hey, look, uh, if anything happens, this is my pinpoint. This is where my car is parked." Um, and I told her, I was like, uh, "Go to my uh, my uh, my Apple and use use uh, find my find my iPhone." Mm -hmm. You know, just walking through the woods, going while it's going, bing, 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 bing. You think you were less afraid because it was daytime, or because you're a little bit more immersed? Uh, no, in I. The company of Bigfoot. No, I, I, it, it was a. I don't know I can't, I can't really describe it. It was. Well, one for for one, it, it probably was not their their feeding time. Uh, they weren't trying to you know do any monkey business. It was a, yeah. <laughs> it was a. Uh, I couldn't resist. It was a. Possibly what some of them call a day watcher, you know. Okay. And uh, it's you know those are the ones that are like designated to keep an eye out for like interlopers who are getting too close to like the rest of the clan that's that's sleeping or resting or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um. Because that day there was more than one. There was there was at least three three that I know of. Uh, because at the same time we heard two, and then later as we were leaving, because we were losing daylight, and uh, the sounds kept getting more and more. Um, and I believe that they were curious. Um, they were like, right, "What are these guys doing?" You know. Right. I mean, other animals that are in the forest, a lot of them will be curious and want to see what's going on. They won't get too close but yeah. they will get close enough to just kind of check you out right you know i mean i have my my opinions on this and say so just something that i thought of is that just like any other creature and man over the the centuries we've evolved mm -hmm. and you know adapted like different uh stealth and you know hunting these kind of skills yeah. So if you think about it, here's Bigfoot and he's got to learn to adapt to his environment. And so he's, you know, he, he learned how to survive, learned how to, to protect himself or keep himself safe. And I mean, why, why not? You yeah, go out I, there. I mean, they're, they're, they're going to be watching you, of course. And of course, and also, when somebody has an intent, 
you know, like it is when you go ghost hunting, your intentions are going to affect whatever yeah. you're, you're going to, of course. Yeah. to investigate. And so if, if you have bad intent, you know what happens whenever you're on a ghost hunt and somebody's in there and they're, they're just trying to provoke and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. You're, you're going to get, get attacked. Some, yeah. You're going to get some weird stuff going yeah, on. Yeah. I don't like that. So why not? I mean, a lot of dogs and cats and different animals like this, they can sense all kinds of things off of you, what your emotions are. I mean, even if you're fixing to have a diabetic episode or, yeah. or a yeah, seizure. Look, yeah. So no doubt. Maybe yeah, the same there's a thing lot of animals that have a lot of strange, uh, uh, senses that you know that like honestly they shouldn't have like a dog knows when you're about to have a heart attack you know mm -hmm. they it's like they can smell they can you, smell cancer yeah they it's crazy you know like yeah. so some of my theories about bigfoot really aren't that far-fetched you know like some of them even don't make sense to me but but it's like uh you know i just kind of wrestling around with like uh, weird thoughts it's, it's evolution, man. Why not? Yeah. It's some, some kind of a adaptation to its environment. So yeah, I mean, a lot of it's just really speculation. Uh, it, uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. One thing you were saying about the Bigfoot with the UFO activity—it's not UFO, but one place that we go to—it's famous for having these lights. Mm -hmm. We've seen multiple different kind of lights there, but. It is interesting that those lights kind of correlate with Bigfoot sightings and their presence. So I don't know. I find that interesting, yeah. but I don't necessarily think there's exclusively a relationship. Uh, you know, like, honestly, sometimes I think uh, because there's there's been um, uh, like the old timers, the ones that 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 are, are well known from you know Pacific Northwest um that have like talked about you know hearing these creatures hooping and hollering and then they see like weird uh just balls of light you know um i'm just wondering that uh, like like i don't want to say that that they're the cause of it but you know like it it, it is just it is really odd that uh a lot of times bigfoot sightings do correlate with uh with these weird orby intelligent lights yeah it's it's strange it's very strange it's just really weird when you talk about those old timers ones that have lived near the woods or in the hills all their lives they know every creature up and down and when something like that comes up they're gonna know what it is yeah and if they can't tell what it is they Maybe it is Bigfoot. Yeah. I mean, they know the coyotes and, and wolves, they, they, they sound different. Yeah. But you can tell which is which. And yeah. of course you got the, the dogs and, and, you know, all kinds of creatures out there. So, Hey, those guys, I think they're probably the, the best witnesses you can have. Absolutely. I mean, those lights definitely aren't swamp gas. I mean, no, I'm just, I'm just going to say that not. now. They're not, it's not Swamp Gas. It's Taco Bell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a different kind of gas. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, like, it, it's just, it blows my mind how many people, uh, like, have interactions with these creatures and don't even realize it. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, we were, <laughs> we were on this trail and, and uh, like we were like all this stuff was going on. We were hearing like noises, walking. Uh, we heard a couple of uh, whistles. And then like this couple with their little dog and the dog was adorable. Like, I'm just going to go out and say that. I want, <laughs> I want to take the dog. It's cute. And they're just like walking on by like no big deal. Like I'm like fully geared, man. I got this 30 pound backpack. I got like, you know. <laughs> two cameras i got my buddy he's strapped up with a with an action camera on his shoulder i got one on my shoulder he's wearing a he's wearing a a, a chest rig mm -hmm. you know with like all sorts of pockets and stuff and like we're just Y'all are those. yeah people. yeah we were up oh, there's a there's the people again yeah. oh my god and like i'm like because i heard something i was like i was trying to get a good angle 
with the camera, like in the woods, you know. And I hear, I hear, hey man, hey, hey, get my phone. I'm like, looked over. Uh, hey, how you doing? All right. Yeah, no. Have a good day. And I'm like, I must have looked like a freaking idiot, man. They're like, what is this guy doing? I'll tell you what, man, we did see the weird, and like this kind of, it creeped me out a little bit. Um, it creeped me out enough to actually look through and see if there was any missing hikers recently. Uh, really? There was a, <laughs> yeah, it was a random hoodie. Uh, and it was probably, I don't know, 30 yards, 30, 40 yards off the trail. <clears throat> and it was actually just hanging uh, on a, it, it was, it was hanging on a stick, a stick that was stuck in the ground. And it was just stuck on there and it was hanging from that stick. And I was like, dude, what? Why is that there? That's like, that's really. It's Bigfoot's version of a scarecrow. Yeah, it's like their flag. You know, maybe it's like a Bigfoot pirate. I don't know. <laughs> maybe that's a warning. I don't know. It was creepy, dude. It was just really creepy. Mm -mm. I was just like, man, good thing it's not cold. because I'd, I'd be taking that hoodie. <laughs> what did it look like? You could have took hoodie? it home and washed it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, it's right here, actually. I'm just kidding. <clears throat> I didn't touch it because I didn't want to go uh, into that area um, because there was uh, a lot of a lot of rustling uh, coming from that direction. I don't want to get too close. And there was actually an odor. We did find a small structure, and, and it looked like. Now I'm not saying it was. I'm not saying it wasn't. I was just. I'm just saying that it was out of place. And it was, uh, there were, there was purpose behind it. Mm -hmm. uh, it was not a natural formation. It was uh, small sticks laid in a manner, almost TP like, but it was just a scaled down version. Nothing like the Pacific Northwest stuff. And got it one day. I hope, I hope that I can see something like that because those structures are amazing. They're just fantastic. But this thing, it was, not too far. I was still on the trail when I saw it. I looked through and it, and it just, it was very geometric. I was like, wait, what is that? Uh -huh. And then I saw two, uh, two large branches that came up uh, in, a, in a large X. <clears throat> and like, I, sorry. That's okay. Uh, I, look for, I look for the X's and crosses and stuff like that a lot because that's usually you'll find, you head over that direction, you'll find like uh, a lot of other neat stuff, you know. Um, but this was, it looked what it looked like uh, my in my mind i'm thinking that it was an adolescent uh that was trying to mimic uh his his parent uh, as far as like building the structures mm -hmm. um but it was just out of place uh so took a lot of pictures took a lot of video uh and then uh we went to our easterly direction uh, it was our our nine o'clock uh, we walked over there for probably about uh, 50 yards and there was a clearing it looked like a game trail but it was like a really a rough a rough game trail uh, didn't look like it was used frequently uh, and then uh, my my cohort uh, was like hey do you smell that and uh I didn't smell anything at first and I stepped forward and I was like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a, I got a, a good whiff. <clears throat> and if you, you, when you smell when you smell these things, like you, you know what it is because it's like a, it's a very musky, uh, rotting meat smell. <laughs> yeah. It's like a, like someone set a skunk on fire, uh, right. and then threw rotten meat on top of it. Oh, that's bad. It's not, it's not a forgettable smell. Um, but <clears throat> so I was like, okay, let's, let's kind of back up and head like the other direction. Um, so we did. Uh, and that brings me to my theory on the smells. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't always smell. That, that one night, uh, I didn't smell anything, right? 
Um, I think that they use it uh, for different reasons. I think uh, communication is one. Um, I think uh, to because a lot of it's so intense you want to get away from it. Uh, there's been like people who have been caught in the cloud of it and like started just started gagging and almost like just you know stops you in your tracks but uh i mean i think it's like a deterrent it, it uh i think it just does a lot of different things you know it, it's uh it's like a swiss army swiss army knife of odors um but i do believe that they have uh glands that excrete this odor uh possibly in their armpits i've heard different places um and i whenever i tell people that they're like dude that's that's dumb they're not skunks i'm like mountain gorillas do it why is it so hard to believe that a mythical creature that's not supposed to exist does it as well you know what i mean um and mountain gorillas do it for location like the the the, the patriarch the leader right <clears throat> he'll yeah he does it as a warning like to to uh to like calm his like if they're his little group is getting worked up he'll emit an odor to like uh, calm him down uh if he wanders off like he'll emit the odor uh and it'll be intensified uh to you know the further away he gets but it's kind of like a I'm over here, you know, type, type of, it's like a geolocating stink. Right. It's really weird. It's weird. I actually read that. Uh, it was actually, it's an old study. Um, some people went out and studied these things for a while. Uh, and they, they noticed that whenever he would, they would do certain things, you would actually smell that smell and you would smell it, you know, for different reasons. So they're like, oh, that's it's i was i was like mind blown that's crazy it makes sense because <clears throat> if they don't have verbal communication right. then i'm sure a lot of the hoops and hollers that they have mean something and why yeah. not you know certain smells or like you you said warnings and maybe yeah. for mating and location all kinds of crazy things yeah. i mean look cats and dogs they they do that yeah they, they leave their odors behind so they they that's know true. their area so why not that's true. It, it was just, it was just crazy. So you have any investigations coming up soon? Um, Are you going back to your regular area? Uh, actually, I want to try new. I want to try a new spot that's actually uh, where the lights are. Uh, there's some areas over there that, that I like to hit up. Um, I've been reading a lot. There's. Uh, there's a, there's been a few sightings, a, a lot of vocalizations and a lot of tracks have been seen. Um, but every time I'm like, man, let's go there. It's like something else happens at this other place, either tracks or someone's getting yelled at, or, you know, it's just, I'm just like, man, I want to go to these exact spots. Um, and just, I want to be in the thick of it, you know, I hear you. That's because she's, that's she's got a be. camera on her. We have like cameras on us. As soon as we, you know, we get boots on ground, like we put cameras on and we start them up. She's got one on her. I got one on me. And usually I'll have my, uh, my phone or, you know, my DLSR running or I'll have like, I'll have two cameras. She, she's just like looking at the sights. I get caught up in the Smelling the smells. <laughs> and I'm just like taking pictures of her doing what she does and, you know, I'm like listening and then like I make fun of myself because uh, there's a couple times where like <laughs> I've. Uh, Did you hear that? <laughs> yeah. Like I, and it was like a noise that I made. I didn't realize it. And I'm like, oh. And then I'll like look at the camera. I'm like, I just scared myself. Those are so, my boots. So you're like the Zach of the group, huh? <laughs> yeah, but I'm a lot funnier and more attractive, you know, and I'm not a. Um, I'm not, I'm not gonna anymore. <laughs> Stop talking. Well, I have a feeling she's gonna be the one to find the concrete evidence. 
Uh, yeah, you know, probably. Um, Zuzu, you got this. <laughs> but she's like, she'll let me go. She's the calm one, man. Like, I get so nervous because, yeah. you know, she, she looks really chill. She, yeah, way too chill for my, my, <laughs> my take. <laughs> it's like, uh, I'm an earth child. I'm about to talk to you off camera. Thing. But it was, uh, scary stuff concerns me i try not to be too concerned but i feel like that's why we're going out there well we are but like not to like you know jump on their back and go for a no, piggyback no, ride you got to get close so you have to interact <clears throat> yeah uh, you, know, we'll talk about you have to do it in stages you know you can't just be like hey what's up here i am i'm not i'm not I'm <laughs> i think you just follow her lead she looks like she's got this I mean, when they're yelling at you and, and throwing stuff. I yell stuff. pretty loud, honey. I can yell loud, too. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm talking about? Anyway. Hey, I mean, I know you've heard the song, Big Big Bad Bill is Sweet William now. <laughs> yeah. Halen. Yeah. Yeah. She, she seems I like mean, I, honestly, like, all jokes aside, I, I cannot, uh, I could not wish for a better partner to go out and do this stuff. Aww. Aww. I'm talking about my dog right here, Bridget. <laughs> yeah, what's up? <laughs> Just kidding. Well, that's but, the way I am with Michelle when we go out doing the, the ghost hunts. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't do it without her. So you think it helps being so in sync with your partner? I really do. Um, you know, she has abilities, and she likes to put a barrier around me when I'm ghost hunting. I'm like, will you please stop doing that? I want one of these things to touch me or scratch me. Yeah. That's, you know i need those three scratches man yeah, that's right that's right <laughs> but i mean the things that she does really well it, it it compensates for the things that i don't do very well and yeah. then vice versa so it, when you have somebody that I mean, you can almost finish somebody's sentence when you got to that point then yeah you got that sink and it really really helps when you're doing any kind of investigation yes yeah that's very true it, it, and it makes things like you're not so on edge uh, and you're not constantly trying to like not outdo each other, but you, you know, like what we do like complements each other. Like, you know, I am trying, I want to document everything on video, on camera, on photo. Uh, that's why I carry like three cameras, you know, um, and I, I'm like bouncing between two and I, I have an action camera running. Um, her, I like, I put the action camera on her. Mm -hmm. I turn it on, and every once in a while, I'll peek over at it to see if it's still. Make sure the battery hasn't died, and then I let her do her thing. You know, I mean, like, yeah, I fuss sometimes, but yeah, you know, I, I, I gotta make sure that you know I don't get stolen by a bigfoot. You know? <laughs> well, you're there to reassure each other. Yeah. You got each other's back, and two sets of eyes are definitely better than one so absolutely absolutely well i'm looking forward to going out hunting i've never been on a, a bigfoot hunt so i definitely want to try yeah, this out we will we will definitely set something up man i'll uh uh we can we'll talk about it later um i know that she'd be down for a road trip uh and i know there are some spots up by you guys that that uh that have some hot spots we got um, an extra room absolutely me you know real me <laughs> <laughs> come on <laughs> yeah i think it'd be fun um yeah i mean but honestly like you, you can't go wrong with the old tried and true like we know the areas here that have them so we know like we'll go down and there, there'll be something happening um, do yeah hey i'm down well, I, i'll take vacation I guess it's a date then. Yeah. It's a date. It's a <laughs> double date. There you go. AP and Zuzu, I appreciate y'all coming on the show. I really do. And Absolutely. when when you get some some more evidence that uh, you'll be willing to share, I think we should do another uh, another show where we can show off that evidence. And hey, maybe you'll get some more people interested and in, in go out there. I'm, let's face it. Most people are kind of desensitized to the things around them. Yeah. They're so focused on, you know, whatever's going on in their life or like you said, that yeah. cell phone, 
and and they miss what's going on around them. Yeah. I mean, I, I saw a video of gunshots happening out in the open, and this guy almost just stood there like a statue and said, oh, there, there's a shooting going on. Oh, and my God. I'm like, are you kidding me? I'd be yeah. hitting the deck. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> but you think somebody's playing a game. Yeah. Right, right, right. Um, I mean, you see it on television. The kids are always playing the video games, all that going on. So they they don't really pay attention to their their surroundings like they should. So no. I, I really should keep my eyes and ears open more when we go out because we love to go out to you know especially down the, the creek and mm -hmm. around the lake and, and be in nature. Who knows what I'm missing? Yeah, I'll tell yeah. you what. Like, all you have to do is just stop and listen for a minute. And, I mean, maybe there's something there. Maybe there's not. But, you know, uh, every once in a while, we'll go out and I'll like, I'll like to whistle. Um, and uh, just to see if I can get, like, something, something in return. But it also, like, you do that. You go through the woods whistling. Uh, I think it, they're just like, what, what is this dude doing? Let me look into this, man, because this is weird. This guy's just making some whistling noises. That's crazy. But if you notice, like all the the Pacific, a lot of the Pacific Northwest uh, carvings, mm -hmm. um, they're they're uh, a lot of the large carvings of like uh, the faces have like pursed lips like this. Mm -hmm. It's because uh, the uh, the First Nation natives, uh, one of their names, I, I can't remember what the word, the, the name is exactly, but it actually translates to the, to the whistler because oh, wow. they're, yeah, they, they were, they were known to whistle and this is going back like way past the 1800s. Like, uh, but yeah, if you, if you ever look at some of their, their, uh, some of their artwork uh, that represents, doesn't really look like a Sasquatch, but it is a face. Uh, if it's got like, you know, pursed duck lips. Uh, then that's going to be a that's going to be a big foot. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm excited. I, I really want to try. I can't that. wait, man. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Well, I say I appreciate y'all being on the show, and I appreciate all our viewers and listeners. Without you, we just we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing. So take care, and we'll catch y'all on the next show. Oh boy. Thank you for joining us on Into the Pit. Please follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network and Instagram at The Vibes Broadcast.